Welcome back friends, welcome back to the homestead, back in the office and continuing the journey on automation. Um, in previous videos I've demonstrated um, how we could use automation to improve um, the efficiency of what we do here and take some data which could be useful. Um, and I've showed you a couple of projects um, that I've made just to demonstrate those principles really of, of taking data and control. In this video, I thought it would be um, a natural next step to get on and actually do something practical and rather than show it um, as a project prototype inside, I have something we can take outdoors and use. And I'm just gonna do a simple um, temperature and humidity uh, sensor and uh, make it portable. Um, now, that's not just a demonstration for the sake of demonstration, actually having something, a portable temperature unit um, with humidity, and actually it does pressure as well, um, is something really helpful. So, so you could take it to place to place where um, you just want to measure the what's going on temperature wise to get a feeling of what's going on. Um, whereas normally, you know, you might not want to install something on a permanent basis. So that's what we'll do today. Now, what do we need? Um, so we've got the prototype set up here. Um, again, we've got our ESP32 microprocessor with Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi enabled. And I've got a BME280. Actually, it's this one tiny sensor here, tiny little silver box thing. So that's all rigged up on our breadboard and is working. I think you can see here. Um, and that's sending its data, sensor data, um, by Wi-Fi. The reason it's connected here is simply for power and it allows me to upload the program, but obviously by making it portable, we, we need its own power source. Anyway, it comes in It comes in through, through the Wi-Fi, through the router, into the Raspberry Pi, as demonstrated before. And then this processes those signals using something called MQTT, um, which is you know a protocol, and then it can, very simply make a very nice dashboard and we can see here we've got temperature humidity and um, pressure so just to demonstrate that work and I've got my cup of tea here um, if I just put the sensor over the cup of tea we can see the humidity should shoot up and um, temperature will start to rise as well and I think this is set to send a signal every five seconds from memory um, you can change that obviously maybe you want it once an hour maybe you want it once a second that's up to you. So we've got, as well as our setup, what extra components do we need um, to be able to make this a reality? So um, taking it from the breadboard, the prototyping board, we need to move to something a bit more um, permanent, I suppose, semi-permanent, which is this. Um, now this is also sometimes called breadboard or prototyping board, um, which is more like a traditional electronics PCB um, there's holes in it and um, they're tinned or silvered in order to take components and none of them are connected they're all individual dots I've seen stuff like this actually where the lines are connected as well and you need to scratch it to be able to cut the lines so um, we've got that so I'm going to use these what's called a header and that enables you to you solder the header in so the header is permanent and um, but the ESP32 you can um, slide in and out and um, we need battery tray. I'm going to use four AA batteries, rechargeable. And we need our box to put it all in. This is a um, what's called an ABS box or a hobby box or a project box uh, made of hard plastic and it's got a waterproof sealer. Comes with the screws and everything. And this board and the battery all neatly and then we'll just have to work out how we fix the sensor on the outside so that it's um, usable but also um, weatherproof and you'll need things like um, tools like a soldering iron I've got my soldering iron kit I mean this is a nice little kit it's about 20 euros comes with a temperature setting of a um, soldering iron some different bits and a solder sucker and spare solder and the stand which I think you can see here and also I bought this um, kind of multi-arm tool thing to be able to hold stuff while you do the soldering. You need kind of three or four pairs of hands. Um, 
and for our setup that's kind of a handy thing to have anyway and of course you need some uh, wire as well um, which I've got in my hobby box behind me different colored wires um, and maybe uh, you know if you want to go really nice finish then maybe some heat shrink um, bits you know that you cover over the exposed wires anyway um, so that's all the stuff that you need um, and then we've things like the code and everything I'll, I can link to that in the comment section below but I'm not going to go into great detail of the coding um, I'll just show you an overview I think of the code that you, powers this it's very similar to what we had before and talk you through what's going on to be able to make this work but for now let's get this uh, board soldered up and and then we can uh, go outside maybe into where the greenhouse where the chickens are and leave it there and then watch it um, hopefully connect because I haven't tested how far the Wi-Fi goes yet um, and uh, we'll go from there okay so you just see me um, solder up the legs of the sensor and just need to make a gap in the in the um, box for the sensor to pop through my initial idea is to have it standing up um, like this so just the sensor you know that tiny little square box pops up through and we'll give that a go and see how it works out so just need to solder that up solder the sensor wires onto the um, board and then we can get going and uh, do some testing so just put the batteries in to the battery uh, tray and then what we'll do is pop it into the puppy box and um, I'm going to pop it outside to give it a test to see um, the temperatures outside are around sort of one or two degrees so um, it'll be a good test for it, it seems to work Let's put it all back together and then we'll take it all uh, take it outside. And just pop it on the windowsill. Temperature initially starts to go down, um, but not really as fast as I was hoping. Um, so I find I'm finding this a bit strange, but I'll give it some time and we'll see what we go down to. So not that great really, um, and I begin to wonder whether the residual heat from the um, ESP32 is building up and then um, popping out outside and affecting the sensor readings so I decided to seal seal that off um, it doesn't get that hot but um, you know it's a problem uh, keeping it inside the box but it possibly hot enough to affect the readings so um, I'll just quickly glue gun it up um, and while I'm there I'll just finish it off by glue gunning around the sensor um, to make it as waterproof as I can and then when I've done this I'm just going to give it a quick um, coating with uh, some nail varnish being very careful not to get it onto the sensor itself I've got the box I'm going to come outside now and we're going to do some testing in terms of range and really how good this box is at connecting to the Wi-Fi further away um, so I'm going to I'm taking a walk down to the chicken shed and uh, put it in there and then I'll get my phone out and see if I can connect uh, with the phone well if my phone doesn't connect to Wi-Fi here there's a little hope of the box connecting to Wi-Fi and that's probably because of where the router is in the loft um, so we'll just try outside perhaps in the other greenhouse <laughs> Cockroy. Let's try again. Okay, there's the home Wi Fi. Well, it's not 13 degrees out here, 12. Oh, because the boxes have been indoors, so there's the residual temperature from the box. So it does seem to be going down, so it's connected and working. That's positive. So if I put my finger on the box to heat up the temperature. Oh, there we go. 
I might be sending the information um, it might not be consistent in sending the information but we'll go back indoors now and check on the um, screen on the um, node red uh, which is this you know this is on my iPhone is a node red really but um, it'd be good to see uh, and then I don't want to stay outside in here in the cold so I want to go back in and see what's happening uh, a bit later on whether the temperature is going down and it can continues to connect and stay connected okay so um, I've, I'm indoors now and what I've done is I've switched on um, something called debug mode which allows me to intercept the MQTT messages and display them on the uh, right hand side here and you can see the temperature didn't go down that much actually um, it was a bit disappointing so I decided to bring the box back in make a comparison and I confirmed that by using just an off-the-shelf kind of temperature monitor that something's up and um, it's not really not working as it should so I decided to give up on the BME 280 and drag out a DHT22 which it only does temperature and humidity and we'll give that a go and see what happens with that so um, I've rigged it up on a breadboard and just attach the battery unit so that I can stick it outside and um, see how that fares. So here's the weather forecast temperature, it says one degrees. Um, the one off the shelf said three degrees, although it did go down lower. And here there's a side by side comparison and you can see that um, the DHT22, uh, which is on the right hand side here, um, is starting to go down and measure the correct temperature and the humidity is going up to the right amount as well. So um, I think I'm going to switch to using this type of sensor. And also, um, because the batteries ran out really quick, I decided to lessen the time in between the it pinging the information through. I don't need a reading every second, so I change it to one every minute, and in between get the sensor to go to sleep, or get the ASP32 to go to sleep. And what I'm doing here is I've put a multimeter um, in between the battery and the board, and what we can do is see the um, ampage or milliampage dropping when it goes to sleep. So here it is at um, 10 milliamps, 10 or 9. And then once it wakes up, it shoots up to 140 milliamps, does the thing it needs to do through the Wi-Fi. And then once it's finished, it goes back to sleep again and back to 10 milliamps. Right, we've got our second box, the DHT22. And I'm going to put it in the same place as before, in the, the old greenhouse. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, reading's looking good. Um, they seem to be going down in the right direction, which is positive. So we'll wait to see what happens in the morning. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, it stopped sending readings, so something's happened. Um, I just suspect that the batteries have gone again. Um, but it did go down to zero, which was good. So I'm just going to check it with the multimeter, see what voltage is coming out of the battery pack. Less than three and a half volts, uh, which tells me there's just not enough power there to keep the ESP32 going. Um, but only just. So that does mean that the batteries lasted longer than, than the last lot. So what I'll do is I'll adjust the timing again down to sort of once every five or ten minutes, which should lower the consumption. Okay, there we are. Um, quite a journey. I wasn't expecting all those problems, but essentially uh, we got there. We've, we've got it done. We've got it working. Um, and it's been, you know, you've got to expect problems along the way and a bit of experimentation. Perhaps a bit more research on my part um, might have helped, but... Um, lessons have been learned so anyway um, I brought it back in now I'm going to play with it a bit more basically I'm going to change the timing to for it to send a message every um, 10 minutes or five minutes rather than every minute and that should be enough to allow the batteries to last um, you know at least 24 hours if not 40 hours or, or longer um, and for that for that is fine they're not the ideal batteries for this and that ESP32, to be fair, is probably a sledgehammer to crack a nut. There are more efficient ways of doing it, but it works. And um, the bigger picture is obviously I'm not going to be using little batteries um, to power stuff. I'm going to be using a combination of um, bigger batteries and solar. So there's always going to be an element of topping up and charging and, and you know, bigger, bigger capacity. 
so that that's it for this video i hope you found it of some interest um and helpfully useful if you did then um there's bags of other videos on our channel which you'll find equally helpful and interesting i'm sure and uh, many more to come so do give us a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're not already that would be really kind um so that's it for now um i will say bye for now but after this if you're interested in the code i will do a quick talk through the code before the video ends otherwise you can stop now and um maybe look at another one of our videos so i'll say bye for now and coming up is me talking through how the code works okay let's just talk through this code quickly so we've got our include files which we need at the top and then some um we need to define some stuff so we need to tell at the ESP32 which pin to expect sensor data and what type of sensor we're using. We then need to tell, um, set a definition of some things we're going to use later on. So uh, for sleeping, so for the ESP32 to be able to power down and go to sleep when it's not sending any data to save battery life. So there's the conversion factor for send, uh, milliseconds to seconds, and then we want it to send asleep for 300 seconds and there's the wi-fi settings as well here's our mqtt setting so there's the ip address of the my raspberry pi which is on the local network here could be your computer or something else um, and the topics for mqtt to send the sensor data so that we can read it on our code net uh, road ned no yeah node red um set the variables for the sensor data itself temperature and humidity and then we initialize the sensor so turn the sensor on give it some power and expect something to come back so uh, the first core thing we need to do is to run the setup routine so this is what's done every time the esp32 is switched on or wakes up from sleep a deep sleep um, it will run through the setup so we start the serial monitor which is this thing down here um, if you want to read the serial monitor when you're doing some testing you could delete all this <coughs> serial if you don't want to do the testing so it prints this sort of stuff <coughs> we then to do the routine uh, for the DHT and connect to the Wi-Fi and connect to the MQTT. So every time it wakes up or switched on, it's going to do those things once. Here is the routine to connect to the Wi-Fi. Um, we've got all the settings already. We've got the variables set earlier on, as I showed you, and it'll tell you that it's doing that in the serial monitor down here. Wi-Fi connected, the IP address pinging, etc., etc. Uh, and then we need to do a routine to be able to connect to the MQTT. Um, and again, we've got the stuff in the serial connecting connected. Oh, it fails and tries again. And then we've got the routine to grab the values. So the sensor data basically will grab that. Check it, make sure it's legible. Um, we can print it off as well, which is um, down here. If you want to print it off in the serial monitor, but you don't need to. And then the second uh, thing that we need, the man second mandatory thing, so we've got setup and then we've got loop. So setup once, loop continues to loop. Grab the values from the routine we've just seen before, post them up to MQTT so we can read them on node red, and then go to sleep. Um, go to sleep for this long, that sets the timer for it to wake up and go to a deep sleep and turn off the power to prepare also um, sensors basically and then go to sleep and then when it wakes up it does it all again and that's essentially how it works um, if you've got any questions do leave them in the comments below happy to have a go answering them but otherwise i'll see you in another video soon bye for now